Hey everyone, so this next topic is about adrenal tumors and uh, some of the really common questions that they actually test on step one. So before anything, starting off on just the basics of physiology, what we have is the pituitary gland, okay, and what the pituitary gland does is it releases a lot of different hormones, okay. One of the hormones it releases is ACTH, right? Now, what does ACTH do? It goes to both of your adrenal glands, adrenal gland 1 and adrenal gland 2, okay? Once it goes to adrenal gland, what does it do? It helps actually stimulate the release of cortisol, aldosterone, right, on both sides. Now, not only does it stimulate release of hormones, it actually causes the growth of cells, especially the cells in the gland here. This basically endocrine gland requires ACTH to remain alive and to grow. Okay, so there's two things that ACTH is doing. It, it's actually inhibiting apoptosis and actually causing the gland to grow more. Okay, so it stays alive and it allows it to grow or um, hypertrophy or, um, you know, proliferate more. Now, what happens if I have a pituitary tumor here, first scenario, a tumor that's releasing ACTH, a lot of it. I have a lot of ACTH coming through. What's it going to do? It's going to go to both sides, number one. And number two, and cause a growth of these glands, right? Because what is it doing? It's making sure these cells stay alive and that they're growing at the same time. So we have a lot of ACTH, stimulates both of these glands, and what does it do? A lot of cortisol and a lot of aldosterone, right? So what are we going to see? What does aldosterone do? Reabsorbs sodium, gets rid of potassium, right? and it helps reabsorb bicarb also. So with high aldosterone levels, we see hypernatremia, hypokalemia, and alkalosis. Okay, These are the three things, really common electrolyte abnormalities, and they love asking questions where initially in the question they'll give you lab values and they'll show you that the sodium's really high, the potassium's really low, and they'll say, oh, the pH was, let's say, 7.5 or 7.6, and they'll ask you to connect the dots. Um, even on step three, they, they love asking that, and there are actually a couple questions where they actually, you know, put the electrolytes on there and it's just like this. So, we have a pituitary tumor, high ACTH, cortisol, aldosterone, etc. Um, and that's, you know, if with cortisol, it's known as Cushing syndrome, and with aldosterone, it's known as Kahn syndrome, right, where it's hyperaldosteronism. Um, okay. Now, the second point I wanted to make here is when this cortisol and aldosterone gets released, what does it do? It goes back and actually inhibits the release of ACTH. Okay. This cortisol and this aldosterone is coming back and saying to the pituitary gland, stop releasing ACTH. Okay. Now, let's take for example, the pituitary tumor is gone now. We have a normal person. We have a normal person and now they have a tumor in adrenal gland one, their first adrenal gland. And what is this tumor releasing? It's releasing a lot of cortisol, it's releasing either aldosterone, one of the two, it doesn't matter right now. So it's releasing a ton of it, a ton of it, a ton of it. Well, if it's releasing a lot of cortisol and aldosterone, what's the other side releasing? Well, it's saying, you know, it, adrenal gland number one is doing way much more of a job than, than two, you know, then the body needs. So two is just kind of laying back and not really doing anything, not really releasing much. 
This cortisol and aldosterone goes back and inhibits ACTH. Now, what do we say ACTH is required to do? ACTH, we need the glands. The glands need ACTH to remain alive and to grow. So if we don't have ACTH coming out of the pituitary anymore and it's not stimulating the glands, what's happening? There's no more ACTH. But this tumor that's here does not need ACTH to stay alive and to grow. Whereas this gland number two, adrenal gland number two, needs ACTH to stay alive. So what happens? After a long time of having this tumor release a lot of cortisol and aldosterone, your body spends a lot of time without ACTH. And if it spends a lot of time without ACTH, what's going to happen to this cell, this adrenal gland here, this endocrine gland? It will no longer remain alive and it can't grow, so it shrinks. It becomes smaller and smaller and it basically atrophies. Okay, that's what they mean. So I have a patient who has really high cortisol, really high aldosterone because of the tumor, and its other gland is basically gone. It's shot. There's nothing of it. So what happens after I do a surgery to remove this adrenal tumor? So I take it out. What happens to my cortisol level? Drops. I've dropping, uh, dropped my aldosterone level also. Okay. But now your body says, okay, well, I don't have any cortisol aldosterone, and your pituitary spent so much time without releasing ACTH that this factory is shut down. So now your body can't respond to any stress and create any cortisol aldosterone. That's why the patients who get adrenalectomies and their other adrenal gland is completely shot, they go into, you know, basically cardiovascular collapse. They become hypotensive, you know, all these things because they don't have any more cortisol aldosterone because the one gland that was working that they actually had was taken out. So what are the type of questions they can ask you? Um, they love asking this, you know, this one question where they say, you know, they give you a scenario, a patient has a tumor, they have high sodium, low potassium, basically make, make you want to think hyperaldosteronism. Um, and they say it's from a, you know, adrenal tumor that's releasing it. Then they say, okay, we um, removed the tumor and we decided to do a CT scan. What would you expect to see on the CT scan? An atrophied adrenal gland. The other one that does not have the tumor in it will be atrophied. And they love asking that question. So just by that simple you know, thing, you test a lot of different concepts. You test anatomy, you test physiology with this whole negative feedback, positive feedback. They want, they want you to know, they want to see if you know how this entire mechanism works, how ACTH is released, how cortisol is released, and how it has a negative feedback, etc. I remember this was a really confusing concept for me the first time I learned it, but it's really not that bad.